Hey, what's going on guys? Today uh, we're back on the bully. And there's some things that I did when I was younger that I'm not a big fan of. And this little steering joint right here is just one of them. So, you can see the movement. Now let me get a light. We want to change the slip joint. So this one here, you can see it's a little loose. And this was some old uh, torsion bar stuff from Mark Williams. And I'm just not a big fan because sometimes I get a little bind up right there. So we're going to go ahead and fix the steering so all of that works correctly and telescopes evenly. But to start with, I, I went outside and we pulled a column from a 2004 Honda Civic. And we're basically going to cut this back in here and we're going to make that straighter. And then come out to the rack and it'll have like just some movement right in there. Yeah. That's what we're kind of after. So, all right, let's go see what Sean's up to. So Sean's over here mutilating the old steering column from the 04 Civic. And right here, you can see our slip joint right there. So we're going to put that one in the car and it should make us feel a lot more comfortable. Yes. The other stuff was... Yeah, I was pretty young, so just some things that I want better, and we all see it can be improved, so we're going to go ahead and get that done. Yep, we're going to make it safer, because we know it's going to go faster already. Yeah, we do. What's up, Samantha? Good to see you. Dying from sneezing. Dying from sneezing? Yeah. Smokey? What's up, Smokey? Shane huh? says it's Clyde, but it's not. It's definitely Smokey. Mm. All right, so Sean's got this shaft all stripped down now. So we got a telescoping part here, and then we also had a spline section here for a little give if we needed it. Yeah, but if the chassis really requires something extra. It'll still have it. Yeah. So, so it's a nice piece. It looks really good. It's really hit. feels heavy duty. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about that, when this is coming forward, this bar is aimed down, so it's trying to push that direction. So, in reality, it's trying to pull down and push the opposite direction the column's going, so that's why it's not working as well. Whereas, if we had it solid to like here, and the collapse joint here, as that folds, it would be in the dead center of the pinch zone, so that's what would actually cause it to pull and push because then it would be an even stroke on it because if you're like this and you want it to go up in and you're pushing down I mean it doesn't even want to do that naturally whereas if you're like this and you start pushing look that naturally goes on that side but not the other way around if you're down here I mean you push in the opposite direction you can feel it fighting itself you see what I'm saying? So really we gotta get the slip out here by the actual flex joint. And I can make all this solid to a U-joint on this side. I'll drive it around and oh, yeah. I'll drive it around and do it all. It's where it can be by the tools. Make life a little easier running back yeah, and forth. I agree. Alright guys, I'm getting ready to pull this old joint out here and right inside of this little crevice here there's some zip ties. It's very dark in there so I'm going to use this hacksaw blade on this nifty little handle to go ahead and cut those in half, get that out so then I can remove this bolt and get the old knuckles out. You know, get it all out from there to that joint. Alright, so I need to measure how much actual physical collapse room I really truly need. So we have that all out of the way right now so nothing's getting in the way of binding. 
the first thing we're going to do is measure the distance because this is the part of the sled that does move and the firewall doesn't. So right now we're sitting at six and seven eighths. So now we're going to six jack it up. Seven Okay, tires. Now we have five and an eight. So total distance there. It's about a quarter inch shy of two inches. So okay. we got an inch and three quarters. Inch and three quarters. Yeah. Okay. Full telescopic range. Okay. And hold on a second, let's try the other direction too. I didn't really go down any, did it? Okay, so we're good. Yep, it stayed the same. All right. Because the bump stop that's built into yep. the chassis there. That prevents the sled from nosing over too yeah. much. All right, so an inch and three quarters is what we came up with? Correct. All right. Does our slip joint have enough for that then? I'm gonna go measure those now. Sweet. All right, well, after making those measurements with Jamie, we learned that we need an inch and three quarters of spline movement. So, using my finger, we got about an inch that it collapses there, so, yeah. So, butts right up to that weld. There's full max. Line on my knuckle right to the tip. One inch. Okay. I'll take measure and show you. One inch. <laughs> so, anyways, we need an inch and three quarters. Three quarters of an inch, too short. That one's out of the question. So, I just got this one out of the bully, and this one. We have a total of two, oh, my bad. Hold on. We have two and a quarter inches of splines here. So, meaning that we only need an inch and three quarters, that gives us a half inch of full engagement at all times. So, at full bump either direction, we will not pull out and we will have a half inch of spline. The only thing I'd like to have longer there is just to keep it from getting any kind of buckle this way because the more length you have it keeps it more straight and more true but that's it full full max sled compression so hopefully the more tuning we get the less and less of that we'll get and we'll stay farther and farther away from there but a half inch is still a bunch of good spline and moving the splined area to outside the body where the sled pivots is actually going to increase it's function a lot, so we're actually gonna do a lot better. So, we are gonna go ahead and use this one. So let's get to it. All right, so after playing with the pieces and stuff like that, the original slip yoke, I actually ended up finding we only had about two inches of movement total on it. So, I dug in a little deeper into the one from that column, and I ended up finding that it had a piece of Teflon plastic that they had put on here and then ran this over it and it pretty much locked it on So then you only got one inch of play. So I hammered it off busted that off and now I got a pretty smooth Moving moving slip joint. So this one's gonna give me about two and a quarter inches of slip. So I'm gaining a whole quarter inch With you know three inch max plunge in the other one. So we're gonna have like five eighths plus uh, You know engagement at all times okay. maximum extension so uh so now this that is I have, the joint you're using now so now yep. you just got to add the rods to it yep so pretty much this side is going to be the steering column side and i actually have removed the steering column shaft okay and before it this only piece. had this piece which you can see has got a half inch depth with that full plunge. Bolted. Maybe not even, maybe like seven sixteenths. And look, at full plunge, I could, you know, so we didn't oh, even so have a full Oh, so it took away inch. a quarter inch of it Yeah, almost. we actually were losing more plunge than that. 
So this will have way more positive engagement than this. Yeah, how to. much did it stick out of it here? Yep. So. Okay. But so yeah, now so, this is going to go directly onto that. So inside of the car where this sticks out, it actually only sticks out about an inch. So what we're going to end up doing is in there I can remove about two inches out of the tube. So I'm going to take two inches out of the tube in the car and slide the bushing up further. So that will now give us about this much engagement. So I have seven eighths tube which will be welding on here and then that will slip and then have a bolt onto this, see? So and you'll have more have than, like yeah. Almost three inches of engagement as opposed to as one opposed inch. To one inch. So that'll be a much more solid connection. And we'll still just run a bolt so it can still come apart, but it's gonna have a lot less weird steps and stuff like yep. that, so. And the joint will actually move out by the flex joint of the car. Yep, yep, because it'll be right where the car's gap actually opens and closes. Heck yeah. So put the flex there and it's just gonna move like a shit. Heck yeah. You like it? Uh, yeah, that's enough for a U joint. Weld it up. Next step, weld it up. Tough stuff right there. <laughs> and our it's pretty cool. All right, so this was a sleeve you welded on to the female splines, right? Correct, correct. So that you have the extra length on there. Yeah, this will be on the outside going to this snub, so. But this okay. is gonna give me a little more distance so I can cut off the non sleeve section of this sleeve. We're gonna have maximum plunge. Plunge it. Plunge. <laughs> Alright, so what do we got now? Alright, so I got that same piece that we got the splines in. You know, this rides here. So now I actually have to adapt back down to where it goes to the U joint that goes into the steering rack. Okay. So that's this piece, okay. which is in some three-quarter inch. And so basically, this is just your slip yeah, joint to go between the two. This is a quarter heavy wall, so it's a one-inch inside diameter. So now I can step it down to one inch. See, and that's it's nice and tightly. And the other nice part about stepping here, giving me some distance here, is we're going to get the butt end of this away from this tube so it'll actually, actually plunge gained that much and a half plunge room of slip. so Heck we've yeah. gotten even more now so it's getting safer and safer every time i keep plugging along because i keep designing it better as we go and okay so now i just got to get this th step there and then step down to this and as you can see we're almost there and then that's the whole mm -hmm. once you do that weld onto here, that's the last of the outside of the car. Then you've just got to cut this and bolt it to the inside of the car, right? Yes, yes. And we just have to trim the snout within the car right here. So the steering rod goes through here. And when it stuck out the back, we only had about this much. But as you can see, we have quite a bit that's not connected here. Yeah. So I can cut this back another, you know, inch and a half, inch and three quarters, and then that bushing will slide in, and then just that much more of the shaft will be sticking out. Yeah. And yeah. Heck yeah. Keep on welding. Turned out good. Okay. So I now have the stub that goes into the front uh, U-joint for the steering to the steering rack tacked into our whole other U-joint assembly that goes up to the steering column. And I've already gone ahead, drilled a hole right there. 
and that is the for where the rosette weld is and that will get welded up along with the whole top seam here which all i have is it tacked up right now so those two points will be welded to keep this in here so i mean that's a good strong weld to begin with but by going and doing it up to another point of the tube what that does is it stops it from flexing in the tube side to side which could slowly fatigue the weld or the material at the base of the welds. So by doing this rosette weld, it just makes everything stronger and keeps everything happy. So, yep, we're gonna go ahead, weld that up. And then the last thing we have to do on this is cut this to length and drill the hole for where it pins to the column. So we're gonna go ahead, weld those two pieces up. That'll be done. And then we're back into the car shortening the steering column tube and then assembling and then cutting this to length and pinning it so getting real close all righty well there it is all welded up got both the rosette welds all filled in and then i got that all welded up as well and then i also cut that on a bias which is at a diagonal and what that does is it gives you a longer beads so you actually have more contact patch than just a circle you know stretch the same circle out to an oval you got more distance so therefore more contact patch stronger weld now i just gotta trim this shaft sleeve down so it's pretty long it's about a quarter inch in from the end of the tape here but this is tape i just rolled it up inside out to stick to itself so I'd have a guideline, pretty much. So, what we're gonna do is just uh, cut it off now. Came out really nice and straight, considering I had to use a sawzall. It's about the only tooling I could have gotten in there. So. Yeah. <laughs> that actually looks really nice and square. Very excited, very happy. So, success. All right. So after we got that stub cut off, I went ahead and just put the bushings and the column back in. And so this is what we got now. So now, instead of just that much exposure, we have that much more shaft. So what that's gonna allow us to do is get a lot more of this part of the shaft to collar this. So I'm gonna put this washer, which is gonna keep the column from yanking out once it's all pinned together. And now I just gotta pretty much mark the length of what I need. So it's all bolted up out in the engine bay. Now I just need to get our length. Just look right out. There. All right. So now we'll go ahead and take that out. I'll cut that off, put it back together, and if it all fits real good right there, we're gonna go ahead and pin it, and that should be it. That'd be awesome. Yeah. All right, now I got the top cut, and we're gonna go ahead and we'll slide it on in there, and see if it fits. So I got my washer, and this slides up over. Okay, and that stops it from moving in and out of the splines there. This needs to be right, so I gotta stretch my splines out down here. Okay, that looks really good. Now let me see if it goes full. Oh. Tell me when it looks like it bottoms out. 
Right there. All right. So now we got the whole chassis in full compression of the steering column. And it's fully compressed at the sleeve and everywhere else. And it's not bound up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and drill our alignment pin, which keeps the column locked to the rest of it. And then we'll put a bolt in and then lower it down and it should be pretty much a complete steering systems. All right, there's our hole. Let's see if the 10 fits like a glove. This way. There's a nylock nut, right? Yes. Okay. And, oh. You had a ratchet. Wrenches. Oh, going back to my box. All right. So are we fully connected now? Yeah, we are. Yeah, fully connected. Let's tighten these two up. Yeah. And then once we test it, when you guys can take it apart and get her all painted up and I'll start the next project. Almost there. You think it'll steer jacked up now? I'm pretty sure it will. I heard it just moved it a little bit and I didn't yeah. feel nothing. Jacked up before, it wouldn't steer very good. All right, that's signed up. If you want to give me the camera, I'll go ahead and yeah. see if it goes full. Oh, man. Well, that was full bump to full bump on full full collapse on the chassis. Yeah. yeah, and before when you collapse it, it wouldn't steer very good. All right. Actually, if you want to watch that joint, watch that. Yeah. we can see it separate. Ready? Yeah. Now jack it up. Like a glove. <laughs> it's too perfect. <laughs> Working just like I envisioned Bro, it. <laughs> beautifully. Yeah. Woo! Here you go. Works. Oh yeah! It's <laughs> so tough! <laughs> I know, I'm a little weird, guys. That's sweet. I'm excited. Brent's not even here yet. Can't wait to see jump on Jump on the front real quick. Sweet. And I know... There's still after, an I inch still and a half. Oh yeah, an inch and a half of yeah. solid spline connection. That's sweet. So, I feel a lot safer with that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The only way that's coming apart now is if the sled detached. Yeah. And if that and detaches, we got more problems. Yeah. <laughs> we have some big issues. So, woo! There is a good correction on the bully. Yep. Now we just got to show Brent when he gets back from the store. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. So we're going to set. This tack isn't working. Every time we kill the kill switch on the back, it's resetting it. Right, Todd? Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to abandon this. We're going to put the shift light to an output on the prologger. The prologger has some outputs. So I already went in and set it up. I'm going to show you guys, though. So output one. So we have it set up as a type output. It's using the tack, so it'll turn the ship light on at 8400, it'll turn it back off at 8350, and then we can test it. We're not using their fuel, we're not using time, we're not using his boost, it doesn't need a reset, so we're set up there. So now all we've got to do is we've got to put a switch power, there's two wires on the ship light. One of them has to go to a switch power, and the other one has to go to our light blue wire, which is going to be our ground output from the prologger. So the wiring is actually going to be extremely easy here because we've already got some T-taps. So 
we can just put our one wire from the shift light to our old power for the tack and then, just and then tap another the tap off the light blue for the other wire so we don't have to run a bunch of wires we'll use what's already here and then Brent will have a shift light he's got the shifter on the button on the steering wheel now so we shouldn't run into any more shifting issues now huh this thing will be sweet Right on. Rip in Vegas. Yep. So Todd's gonna get on moving Vegas those two wires comes. around and check another thing off our list. All right. So we've got the one T tap on the power. Move the one T tap to the light blue. Put spades on the end of this. So we're on tack. Tack on 8400. Tack off. We need to just make this a really high unreasonable value that it'll never get to. 12,000, I don't think we'll ever get there. Tech test. Pretty instant too. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. Good job, guys. Hey, look who's here. So you got some stuff done while I was out. What are you talking about? I don't get anything done. Whoa! What, dude? Alright, watch it. Hey, watch it. Oh, wow. Whoa. Holy mackerel. That's like perfect. Dang. Go steer it. Steer it while it's up in the air. Here now. Yeah. That's I know that's what I was impressed about. It's so easy. Full lock. You can literally go full lock in here. Hey. <laughs> Alright, watch your toes. Alright, Brent, watch it come back out. That's nuts, man. Look how creative you got there. Look how much traffic. There's still an inch and a half. There's still yeah, I still have an inch and a half in engagement, so now you really should feel safe. And you cut the bar back here too up so there's more shaft. Yeah. yeah, it's got three inches of engagement underneath. Oh, so you took you took it up to here too. Yeah, yeah actually. There's a flashlight right here. Is there a piece that slides in here still? Or is yep. It yep. Yeah, there's like three inches in there. Here, here's the chunk I cut off. Oh yeah. Dang. Well, show sure enough, we got bully steering again. I'm pretty stoked about that. Sean killed it on that. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. I feel way safer about everything he's kind of put together. And, whew, it is so much better. You just check that out. And then Todd and Jamie are hard at work, and they got the, the shift light working, and then also got another wide band on the other bank. And then that one is actually tied into the ECU. So I'll be able to log a bank and the other bank I can log right off the pro logger. Uh, yeah. And it sounds like uh, Jamie got the boost control stuff working a little bit better on the pro logger as well. So I- Just a little backwards. It's been a while since we used it. So when we upped the pressure, we also upped the spring, but we needed to lower the spring pressure because you have to widen the gap for it to give it more duty. Which so makes, we just went the wrong which way. Which makes sense. Yeah, we just went the wrong so way. So we'll put her back on the dyno once more just to get the boost set just before we go to Vegas. And hopefully we're ready to kick some ass. So, so appreciate you guys watching. Give us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. It's glued a little bit. It's glued just a little, little wee bit. <laughs> now let's make a rip. <laughs>